On August 7, 2009, a married couple was walking under a bridge near Lakeside Road in Greenville, South Carolina, looking for wildlife. They then stumbled upon a nude body of a woman in a creek. The woman was quickly identified as 24-year-old Allison Sutherland Crane, who was a Greenville native. An autopsy revealed that she had multiple blunt force trauma injuries. There was no DNA belonging to a possible suspect on her or at the crime scene. There was also no witnesses. Investigators located cell phone records that helped them make a connection between Allison and 38-year-old Jeffrey Phillips. Phillips was a frequent cab driver in the area and had driven Allison around before. Investigators were able to uncover that Phillips owed Allison money. Recently, investigators were able to locate more cell phone records where Phillips revealed he was the one that took Allison's life. Investigators also found that Phillips is currently incarcerated in Sullivan County Jail in Tennessee. He is awaiting trial for taking the life of his roommate back in 2017. His roommate was 28-year-old Timothy France. The two lived in a mobile home park in Tennessee. Phillips got angry with Timothy because Timothy sold methamphetamines to Phillips' girlfriend. Phillips tied Timothy's legs with a towel and then dragged him from the trailer. He then used a rock, garden hoe, and a sink pedestal to beat Timothy. The neighbors called the police. When they arrived at the crime scene, they found Timothy's body and Phillips exiting the trailer wearing only a bath towel. They let Phillips get dressed. When he reappeared, officers noted that there was blood on his shoes. When interviewed, Phillips kept changing his story. In one of the versions, he stated that he lured Timothy outside claiming he needed help assembling a hammock. Phillips allegedly said that he remembered punching Timothy in the face before he blacked out due to his anger and couldn't remember what happened. Back to Allison's case. Investigators have not stated specifically what was said in the cell phone records that led them being convinced Phillips is responsible for what happened to her. Phillips is now awaiting trial for both crimes. Greenville County Sheriff Hobart Lewis said, This is a prime example of the vision we had for the unit coming to life, to bring resolve and justice for the family and friends who tragically lost their loved ones. It is hard enough to lose someone you love, but having unanswered questions and their case go cold elevates the level of difficulty. I am so blessed to work alongside these dedicated investigators who work tirelessly in their pursuit of justice. We have so much more work to do, but this is another tremendous step in our agency's pursuit of unwavering commitment to solve cold cases. Lewis also said there were still about 90 cold cases in their county dating back to 1967 that they are still trying to solve. Allison's mother, Tammy Morrison, had this to say. Allison was loved by so many people. She was loved by her daughters, her sister, me, other family members, her uncle Stevie, and a lot of people that's not here that's passed on since this. Allison's sister, Ashley Simmons, also spoke to the media. We always said from day one that we would never give up on finding who took my sister away, and we never did. Thirty-nine-year-old Sherry Huss lived in Desert Hot Springs, California in 1994. She had moved there after divorcing her husband Jeff Huss, who lived in Cathedral City, California. They shared custody of their children, age 14, 13, and 8. By April 1994, Sherry was settling into her new life. It had been two months since she divorced Jeff. She found an apartment in the 12,900 block of Parma Drive. On the evening of April 23, 1994, Sherry sent a message to her parents. She told them that someone had been taking photos of her. She also received strange phone calls when the other person would hang up without saying anything. Sherry's parents decided to leave their San Fernando Valley home to check on their daughter. They got an ominous feeling when they arrived there. Sherry's porch light was on and her dog was outside. Her front door was unlocked and her car was parked on the street instead of the driveway. When the couple went inside, they found the unimaginable. Their daughter's partially clothed body was lying lifeless on the floor. She had multiple stab wounds and was also bitten by the person that took her life. Investigators were able to collect saliva from the culprit. It was evident that Sherry fought hard for her life and there was blood belonging to the suspect at the crime scene too. A DNA profile was created of the person who committed this crime and it was entered into the combined DNA index system. No matches could be made, unfortunately. Investigators tried to find the person who took the photos of Sherry and the person responsible for the strange telephone calls, but wasn't able to. 
Over the years, Sherry's parents worked hard to keep her case in the public eye, including the offer of a $50,000 reward. Every few years, investigators entered the DNA profile into the combined DNA index system, but there was never a match. Thus, the case went cold. Recently, with the advent of genetic genealogy, things quickly changed. In February of 2022, the Riverside Regional Cold Case Team was able to use the technology to identify a man as a potential person of interest. That man is 48-year-old Sharon Eugene Gadlin, who lives in Gardena, California. Back in 1994, when the crime took place, he was just 20 years old and lived in Thousand Palms, California, which was 12 miles away from Sherry's apartment. On February 14, 2022, cold case investigators obtained a saliva sample from Gadlin. Four days later on February 18th, investigators received confirmation from the State Department of Justice Lab that there was a DNA match of the saliva to the DNA profile of the person suspected of taking Sherry's life. He was arrested on March 4th, 2022, when officers pulled his vehicle over at an intersection in Gardena, California. Gadlin had previous run-ins with the police, including a 1999 DUI arrest in San Bernardino County. He was also convicted that year of entering property without consent and public intoxication. It is not known yet if Gadlin and Sherry knew each other and why he did what he did. Riverside County District Attorney Mike Hestron said in a statement, that he was hopeful the arrest meant Huss and her family would get the justice they deserve and had waited so long for.